Are you tired of falling victim to the fried liver attack as black? This aggressive opening can catch you off guard and leave you struggling to defend. However, don't worry because in this video, we'll go over tips and strategies to help you successfully defend against this attack and turn the tables on your opponent. So get ready to strengthen your defenses and improve your game. The fried liver attack starts off with the move e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, which is the Italian game. Now as black, we play knight to f6, and knight to g5 comes, which is the fried liver attack. In one of our previous videos, we showed the line for d5, capture, and knight takes d5 is a mistake because as white, you now play knight takes f7, and we showed some of the key variations and main lines and ideas as to how white easily attacks black in this position. So to counter the fried liver attack, today we'll be discussing this move bishop to c5, which is the Trexler counter attack. And now you might be wondering, doesn't that seem like a blunder because white can just play knight takes f7, right? Forking our queen and our rook. And yes, this is the whole idea of this Trexler counter attack variation. We allow white to bring in his knight to gain this fork on our queen and our rook because now we have a counter attacking blow with bishop takes f2 check. And in this Trexler counter attack, we'll be looking at two main variations which is where white captures our bishop on f2 and what if white ignores the bishop and plays king to f1 instead. So first, let's take a look at what if white captures our bishop. Now we play knight takes e4 check and in this position, the white king has six moves to play. Four of them loses almost immediately and only two of the moves does not lose but it's quite tough for white to play this position. So let's take a look at the first line in this Trexler counter attack. The first move is king to f3 and this is the only variation where we don't play queen to h4 or have a queen to h4 idea because now we can just play queen to f6 check. The other five variations that we'll take a look later will always be queen to h4. So here white has to capture the knight. We force the king even further up to the center of the board. Now we play queen to f4 check. The king has to go back to d3 because if he goes to d5, we just give checkmate here. So white has to play king to d3. Now we give check here, queen d4 check. The king has to only one move, going back to e2. We capture the bishop now, white blocks, and we capture the knight. So this is also a key idea in the Trexler counter attack because in other variations where white plays another king move, we also have this nice idea of capturing the bishop with check and then capturing the knight as well. And in this position, we gain back two of our pieces that we sacrificed earlier and we also a pawn up. And it's very easy for black to play as we have easy attacking threats with knight to d4 check, pushing up our pawn, bringing out our bishop and even castling. Because since white has moved his king, he's no longer able to castle anymore. Now let's go back to look at this variation and let's take a look at the second line which is king to e1. Now we play the move queen to h4 check. This is a really key and important move to remember as queen to h4 is played in almost all the variations besides the first one that we just went through. The whole idea is we are threatening to give checkmate on f2 and if we move our knight on the next move, our queen now attacks the bishop which also attacks the knight as well. So here, white has to play pawn to g3 to block the check. Now we play knight takes g3 which is another key idea in this variation where again our queen hits the bishop, our knight hits the rook and we are also threatening to give discover check on the next move. White is forced to capture back our knight and now this leaves his rook hanging to capture. Queen takes h1 and it's a pretty easy win in this position. The third variation in this line is king to f1. Again, we play queen to h4, threatening queen to f2 checkmate. If white plays a move like queen to e2, or queen to f3 trying to defend the square, now we just play knight to d4, bringing in additional attacker and we are also threatening checkmate on the next move. If white tries to defend this way with pawn to g3, we just do the same and capture with check this time and also after capturing, after white captures our knight, we capture the rook with check. So white has to play 
queen to e1 in this position to guard the f2 square. And again, our idea was always to go knight to g3 check regardless of whether white pushed up his pawn or not. The whole idea here now is if white captures this way with the pawn, we just take the rook and if he captures with the queen, now we take the bishop with check, pushes up his pawn and we capture the knight. And again, we similar to the previous line, we gain back material and is also a pawn up. Now let's take a look at the two moves for white which doesn't lose immediately. The first one is king to g1. Again, we play queen to h4. Always remember queen to h4, key move in this position. Our ideas are always the same and white has to play pawn to g3 to block the checkmate. Again, we capture the pawn here, pawn captures and now king g1 doesn't lose immediately because the king protects the rook and we cannot capture the bishop here because it doesn't give check on the white king. So instead, we capture this pawn over here with check. The white king is forced to go back to f1 and now another key move is to play rook to f8. We get our rook out of danger from the enemy knight and our rook now pins the knight to the king. Even though the computer gives this, evaluates this position as 0.00, .00 it's actually quite a difficult position for white to play because black's threats are very simple. We are going to play pawn to d5 for the next move, attacking the bishop because we want to bring our own bishop up to either bishop to h3 check or even bishop to hg4 and attacking the queen. And pawn to d5 also blocks this diagonal with the white bishop and it allows us to capture the knight on f7 later on. So like I said, it's not an easy position for white to hold and defend. And the second move for white to play which does not lose immediately is actually king to e3. This move might seem a bit weird and unlogical because the king is actually going further away from safety of his pieces and towards the center. And here after queen to h4, same threats with queen to f2 or either queen to f4 here, white can defend with pawn to g3, defending both the threats. We capture the pawn again, pawn captures and now the key as black we must know another key move here which is queen to d4 check. If white plays king to e2, we just capture the bishop and then capture the knight afterwards, similar to previous variations. So white has to move his king to the left this way, king to f3. And then now we have a really nice move which is just castling. At first glance, it might seem that castling is actually an illegal move, but it is not because neither the f8 or the g8 squares are under attack and that's why as black we are allowed to castle here and it's not illegal. It might seem dangerous as well because the knight can always jump to h6 giving double check or the knight can just jump elsewhere to give discovered check with the bishop. However, white cannot do so because he's, he's actually the one in pin as our rook on f8 is pinning the knight to the king. So there's no way white can move the knight as long as the king is pinned to our rook. And again, even though the computer gives this position as 0.00, .00 it's actually difficult and tough for white to play because our threats again are simple. The queen is attacking the bishop, we are threatening to play pawn to d5 for the next move, gaining a tempo to hit the bishop. After pawn to d5, white will lose his protection on the f7 knight and we are also threatening to bring our bishop out to bishop g4 check, winning the queen on d1. And now you might be wondering, we, already, we have already discussed 5 of the king moves, so which is the 6th variation? And actually I save the best for last because the final, the 6th and final variation is my favorite and it goes king to e2. So in this position, we play knight to d4 check first, forcing the king to come up. If the king retreats to f1, we just go queen to h4 like how we did in the previous variations. So king to e3, again queen to h4 with similar threats and if white plays a move like knight capturing our rook on h8, here we have a force checkmate in a maximum of 7 moves. As you guys can see, the computer ev evaluation on the side shows m7 which stands for mate in 7 moves. Pause this video if you guys would like to try and figure out what the checkmate is. I guarantee you, 
that you will not regret trying to solve this checkmate in seven puzzle because the final position is just too spectacular. But before we continue, if you're finding these tips helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Your support motivates us to continue making great content to help you improve your game. So now let's take a look at the force made in seven moves. The first move is pretty easy and I'm pretty sure most of you will be able to see it, which is queen to f4 check. We now force the king to go king to d3 and here of course we can play knight to f2 check, winning the queen but if we are looking for checkmate, it would be knight to c5 check. Again, white has only one move to go to the side, king to c3 and now we sacrifice our other knight with knight to b4 check. The whole point of this check is if white captures our knight with the bishop, we play queen to d4 which is checkmate. So he has to move his king again, only move king to b4. Now we push up our pawn, pawn to a5 check and white has two options, he can capture this knight or this knight. If he captures the knight on c5, we give another pawn move with check, king captures the other knight and bishop d7 is checkmate. And also a pretty nice checkmate as we checkmate with our bishop which is quite rare as well. So if white captures our other knight with king to takes b5, now we play pawn to c6 check. If white captures our other knight again, we, give, we play queen to d4 which is checkmate. So he has to play king to b6 to try and survive. Now we play knight to a4 check. Again only move for white king to c7 and if you guys found this force checkmate in 7 moves, congratulations. I'm sure you will, you will all have enjoyed the final position as well because now we have an absolutely ice cold giga chat move with pawn to e4 checkmate. Isn't this checkmate just super brilliant and amazing? As, a, as checkmate, giving checkmate with a pawn move is so very 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 rare and which is why I think this is just such a brilliant checkmate. I wish we could end the video here after such a spectacular position and checkmate but we have one more variation to cover. So we have already discussed what if white captures our bishop, king takes f2 over here but we still need to discuss what if white ignores the bishop and play king to f1. Some of your opponents might do so if they are familiar with the Trexler counter attack and they do not want their king to get into multiple checks and be in danger. So here white, white's knight is still threatening our queen and our rook and to save our queen we only have one move to play which is queen to e7. So white will definitely capture our rook on h8 and now the key move here is to play pawn to d5. The whole idea of this move is we push up our pawn once to gain a tempo by attacking the bishop and we also free our own bishop to give threats like bishop to g4 trying to trap the queen. It is not too different compared to the other variations where white captured our bishop earlier. We have seen the idea is always the same, wanting to play pawn to d5 and freeing our bishop because if white plays a careless move like bishop takes, we play bishop g4 and the queen is already trapped. So white has to capture with the pawn and now we play knight to d4 bringing in, trying to bring in another attacker into the position. White can never capture our bishop on f2 because now we give check this way and let's say the king tries to hide in the corner over here and we will have a nice move with queen to c5. The queen attacks the bishop and also knight to f3 with double check is coming soon followed by queen to f2 which is checkmate. So white can never capture our bishop on f2 and let's say he tries to play a natural move like pawn to c3, kicking away our knight. We play, now we play bishop to g4, attacking the queen and also pawn to c3 is a pretty decent move because white frees up his queen to a4 which is what he will play, queen to a4 check. And now another important move to remember is to slide our knight back to d7, defending against the check. The whole idea of playing the, this passive move with knight back to d7 is because now the f file is free for our queen to infiltrate and give checkmate. So here white has two options, he can either capture our bishop or he can capture our knight. 
So let's see what if he captures our bishop first. Now we play queen to h4 check, nothing surprising here. Black white retreats the king, king to f1 and we have a really nice move with castling long. The whole idea with castle here is we bring the rook, another, which will be another attacker into the position with rook to f8 on the next move, giving check and checkmate soon as there's no way for white to defend. So let's now let's take a look at the final variation, which is pawn takes knight. And now here we have a really quiet assassin move with queen to f8. As mentioned earlier, we slide our knight back so that we free up the f file for our queen to attack the enemy's king. The whole point of queen to f8 and not queen to f6 is because white can capture our pawn on e5, creating some complications. Of course, you can still play queen to f6, but queen to f8 is just much easier without much resistance from white. The only way white can try is to play this sneaky move with queen to a3, tra trying to trade off our queens. And if we're not careful, and if you guys didn't notice the queen, you might play a careless move like bishop to d4 check, or bishop to g3, or bishop to h4, bringing out the bishop to give discover check on the king, thinking it's over soon in the next move. But that will be an unfortunate blunder because white can just capture our queen. So instead, now we have to play queen to f4 first. Our queen still stays along the f file, but it gets out of the attack from the enemy queen. And on the next move, we can slide our bishop either ways, give discover check, and bring our queen into f2 for the final finishing blow. And that's all for today's video on defending against the fried liver attack. We hope you've gained some valuable insights on how to defend against this powerful opening and how to counter attack with the Traxler counter attack variation instead. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more chess content. In the comments below, let us know which line was your favorite or which line have you used in the real game before. Thanks for watching and we we'll see you in the next video.